Are you looking for an internet talk radio station for your podcast? Look no further. At the helm of Passionate World Talk Radio are two women that want to provide a spot for you and your podcast to be heard. There are many other places for your podcast, but PWTR has the audience. You will not be disappointed. Our station has been on the internet for the past 16 years. Call us for more information. 484-364-1032. Or text Jeannie White, station manager at T-H-E-C-O-N-N-E-C-T-S-H-O-W at gmail.com for a podcast show details. Welcome to Passionate World Talk Radio. Educate, enlighten, entertain. Any medical or health advice provided and hosted on The Paladina Show will only be given by medically trained or qualified professionals unless a clear statement is made that a piece of advice offered is from a non-medically qualified individual or organization. Any food, herbs, and supplements mentioned are backed up by research studies and doctor protocols. Christine Padovan is a Mortar Institute certified and insured health practitioner, member of EMPA and NAPH. Hello, beautiful souls. I'm Christine Padovan, the Paladina, and most of you who know me know me on my Rumble channel, and that is what I go by. And this is my new show on Passionate World Talk Radio, the Paladina Show. And very excited to be here to be talking to all of you and bringing you information that many of us who are busy, you know, with our daily lives may not get this information from mainstream media or other news sources because it's usually very specific to health and wellness on the natural spectrum and that is not something that is that you'll see unless you're looking for it or researching it and I have over 45 years of experience with always looking to understand and discern what is the root cause of an issue um, you know, regarding, regarding the source of nutrition, exercise, fitness, um, you know, health, you know, health and wellness in general and an overall spectrum. So my experience with always digging deeper and getting to the answers that most people don't get um, is what I want to bring out to, to the world and to the masses, where here you will have access to scientific studies that are not talked about as much. Um, we'll be doing interviews with people that don't get a chance to talk out loud, where they may be just doing quietly their little health practice but not really looking to make a big splash with the knowledge that they have on solutions that, like I said, mainstream and other big organizations probably will not want you to talk about because probably doesn't make them money. So that's probably the bottom line is uh, everyone's always saying that, follow the money. And we're going to talk about something very key today. Um, that I had spoken about in a Rumble video starting on May 4th. And this was regarding the FDA meeting to ban the substance, uh, natural substance glutathione from medical use. Now, what's very key about this is that now, uh, I'm just gonna pull up the Alliance for Natural Health here. And we're going to give you all the links to all of these articles in the description that you'll see on on the website there. Now, the FDA has a pharmaceutical compounding advisory committee. 
PCAC. Now, they meet periodically on discussing what kind of substances should stay in medical use that compounding pharmacies create for medical practitioners, such as IVs, suppositories, that, you know, or just, you know, compounded special, um, what, what, what would you call that, you know, special um, prescriptions that are, that are made from scratch. Now, this was very interesting. The FDA decided that they wanted to ban glutathione. And this is, just to let you know, this is not the first time this has come up with the FDA. More and more articles are coming out, more science studies, since that original 1970 study from that Italian doctor, which we need to really dig for because I have not yet found the original study that that doctor uh, did in Italy with elderly patients that were succumbing to pneumonia. My grandparents succumbed to pneumonia years ago. And he wanted to find something natural that could boost the immunity to keep the elderly from dying when they caught pneumonia. If there was something that could keep the elderly, <clears throat> excuse me, from having to die in that manner. And he found that glutathione, which is a natural element in every cell of our body, but is depleted after age 25. It doesn't, it's like collagen. It doesn't replenish itself after age 25 to age 30 in our bodies. We have to then supplement to get the, um, well, we'll say, the, get the um, adequate amount of glutathione to prevent um, things like pneumonia, which is a virus. And you'll see that I've already talked about this on previous videos on Rumble regarding how there are studies now since 2020 that have revealed glutathione also prevents viruses such as COVID-19. And we will talk, hopefully I'll be able to get people like Dr. Horowitz on here to talk about how he had known that information from the previous studies, and he had used that to save his patients when they had gotten severe COVID-19 before the COVID shots came out, which is another, another issue in itself that we'll talk about in a later episode. But what we wanna talk about here is the FDA, this uh, Pharmaceutical Compounding Advisory Committee, getting together, wanting to ban glutathione. And the, the key date was June 8th, which was just a few days ago. Today is June 12th. So four days ago, the committee met. And thankfully, based on a, you know, Alliance for Natural Health and I and other practitioners putting, sounding the alarm, having people write in you know, I writing in and um, other health practitioners writing in to say, no, we don't want you to ban glutathione, and here's why. Um, we had uh, people such as Dr. Day present to the committee all this amazing, wonderful evidence to show that glutathione should not be banned. And um, I'm going to give you the link for the whole webcast that if you... Well, if you really want to, you know, see it or, or listen to it, it is eight hours long. Um, they go over not only glutathione, but there was a whole other list of of compounds and elements, uh, not exactly natural elements uh, either, but of other 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 items that compounding pharmacies use that there was on the list for whether they should continue using them medically or not. So. Very big win. So the vote was eight to five. And thank you to everyone who wrote in. And this is very interesting because there is other factors as to why the FDA wants to, you know, have people stay on more expensive treatments and expensive medication versus a natural element such as glutathione 
because in medical use, a, an IV for glutathione is far less expensive than some of these major, major treatments for Parkinson's disease. Um, there, there's an interesting thing in the article here where some of these medications and some of these that are FDA approved medications, and one of the and a couple of these are for uh, cystic fibrosis, cost upwards of over three hundred thousand per year per patient. That is an enormous amount of money, and it's it's very clear why many people go broke when they have a major illness, such as cystic fibrosis or Parkinson's disease. So glutathione is, as a natural element, is far, far less expensive. Of course, the FDA is not thrilled that it can't really get any drug fee from a natural element. So just so very interesting fact here, the FDA receives 45% of its operating budget directly from drug companies in the form of user fees, okay? And that is quite a substantial amount of money for them. So it is kind of understandable why they would want to, you know, kind of kick, you know, drop kick, you know, glutathione off, off of medical use. But doctors such as Dr. Day and Dr. Calhoun um, are very astute as to the benefits of glutathione. And so right now we have a big win. Glutathione is still available for medical use in IVs, suppositories, you name it. Um, so compounding pharmacies can freely make it and use it, um, you know, medical practitioners can use it for their, for their patients. But in the meantime, that doesn't mean the FDA has to obey the committee's vote. They still can, if they wish, they can still put a ban on it. So what AA, AA excuse me, Alliance for Natural Health has done is the letter is still active on this, um, on this article. And so we're going to be providing you the link to the article. We encourage you to write in. And, and this actually, this is really wonderful. This email also goes to the Food and Drug Administration itself, as well as the senators and representatives for your local area. So... You, and also gives you the ability to write in your own message. And I actually did that myself. I explained how glutathione actually saved my life, and it did literally save my life, from intentional heavy metal poisoning hidden by nanotechnology. And it's incredible. Um, my toxicologist, uh, and we can't say her name right now, um, she's um, an expert witness and uh, for a lot of criminal uh, related matters due to, you know, f that are based on toxicity and poisoning. So um, amazing woman who is into natural, um, natural solutions for detoxification. And glutathione was one of the natural elements that she, the main, the main natural element that she introduced to me to save my life. So this is just incredible. We are, I'm, just, um, I'm just letting you know this was just an incredible win, but the fight is not over. So we will provide that link for you. Now, the other factor um, regarding glutathione and actually other supplements that we use to stay healthy there is another factor that is threatening all of our supplements, and that is two bills right now in Congress, and one of them actually in the Senate, and I'm gonna give you those links as well. So Senator Durbin um, has 
put in a, um, it's called a, a new supplement guidance, uh, which is very, very strange. Uh, let me just pull up some of the information here on that. It's called a dietary supplement listing for 2022. And so now this bill threatens our ability. This is what it's going to do. It's going to threaten our ability to access supplements that we rely on just to stay healthy. And so what it does, it's going to threaten jail time and fines for companies that don't comply by a certain date. Now, this is if this bill passes. Right now, it's, it's still going through the House and one is going through the Senate. It's, it's basically going to do fines and jail time for supplement companies that don't provide what is called proper paperwork to list every single ingredient that they're using to create the supplement. Now, what the FDA is using this list for, and we're going to provide you with this article as well to kind of go through the steps with you, it's going to provide the FDA the ability to say, oh, we don't like that ingredient that you're using. Your supplement is not really vitamin D. So we're going to consider your supplement misbranded. And we're going to fine you for, for doing that. And it's going to then keep that supplement off the market. Now, as you know, supplement companies have been, are third party verified. Uh, most of them are non-GMO and they're, they're, there's very strict um, quality control with creating a supplement. Now, are there cheap, cheap as dirt supplements out there that are probably not as quality control? That's, that's probably a possibility. But for the most part, supplements, vitamin supplements, vitamin and mineral supplements are, are very strictly controlled. So having the FDA, which really oversees drugs, you know, man-made medications, um, is really not in a position to, as they have for, said for years, to be going into and trying to um, now take control of, of supplements. But this is what they want to do. And this is what Senator Durbin, and then on the other side, Senator, Senator Murphy, are trying to get to allow the FDA to take control of. If this happens, if this bill passes, it's going to be extremely difficult to get the supplements that we rely on to be available to us. It also would mean that the price of supplements could then skyrocket. The other side to this, and we're going to include the link to the article, is that this would then allow the FDA to give control to those pharmaceutical companies that make certain vitamins, such as One A Day, such as Centrum, those are, armed, those are uh, owned by pharmaceutical companies, and create vitamins that have the below standard value of, say, vitamin D and vitamin C and say, say the, oh, here it is for you, this one-size-fits-all multivitamin, which doesn't give you the adequate amounts of certain vitamins that you need. There are some individuals, myself included, in my blood, I am low potassium and low iron. And as an athlete from a very early age, when I got those Charlie horses, those, those cramps, that was because 
I had completely depleted what little potassium I had in my body and I would start to cramp. So even today, even though I am still active with you know certain fitness uh, routines and things like that, I still take 99 milligrams of potassium daily. And there is a standard potassium supplement sold separately. Uh, there's a, there's a, a myriad of different companies that, that do this, Nature's Bounty, Nature Way. Um, and it's a standard 99 milligram tablet. I take it daily just to avoid the Charlie horses. Um, I take a, an iron supplement on top of multivitamins, on top of my glutathione, my vitamin C, all these other supplements that I take. So people would be suffering because they wouldn't have access to individual, individual created, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, you know, say with vitamin D, you can get a, th a thousand IU uh, version, you could get a 2000 IU version, you can get these different level quantity, you know, qual you know quantity amounts of vitamin D, the same for vitamin C, uh, the same for vitamin A, vitamin K, there's a, there's a whole, uh, there's magnesium supplements that are separate, um, cal of course calcium supplements as well, um, many of us, you know, especially when we get to a certain age, uh, are low in calcium and we need to supplement our body with that as well. Um, so this would be a tragedy if these bills pass. Uh, the other bill that's trying to be passed with this, um, besides what Senator Durbin is trying to pass, Senator Murphy is trying to sneak in a version of it in the Drug User Act. And the Drug User Act is something that has renewed, is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to be renewed at the end of the year 2022, around September, and that's that has to do with the drug fee that drug companies have to pay the FDA. And that's going to, I guess, reestablish that fee. They're trying to sneak in the Supplement Listing Act under the Drug User Fee Act. So ANH, Alliance for Natural Health, is aware of this. I'm making you aware of this and providing you also with the article links for that because there is a separate letter to write in to prevent, to, well, to, to have, have you write in to your senators and representatives that you do not want this bill to pass. There is no need for the FDA to control supplements. One of the things that, um, and I provided this on May 4th in the other video on Rumble, was talking about why did the FDA come up with this, you know, this mandatory, you know, supplement listing, you know, with the ingredients and all that. Why were they trying to, you know, get, you know, you know, beat hard on, on supplement companies? So they, this is what they tried to say. So according to the FDA, in 2021, the agency received 2,400 adverse event reports related to dietary supplements. Now, let's think about this for a second. So let's put this in context, okay? According to the FDA's adverse event database, okay, in total, in 2021, the FDA received a total of 2,333,453 adverse event reports, okay? So that means that dietary supplements make up 0.1% of the adverse event reports to the FDA. So 0.1% and zero deaths, by the way, zero deaths from a dietary vitamin supplement. Okay, now, according to the FDA's database, on the opposite side of the coin, in 2021, drugs alone killed 
187,750 Americans. Big difference, right? With taking a vitamin supplement and 2,400 people, I guess, you know, called in and said I had, they had an adverse reaction to a vitamin supplement. Now, I look at that as, just as I mentioned in my Rumble video, that there are certain people that get maybe a little carried away. They want to get better really quickly. Um, I have a, you know, there's, we can, I can actually look up who the gentleman was, but there was a very famous case. He died of the toxicity of it. A man who got really bent on carrot juice. He really thought that carrot juice was the miracle thing to take care of all of his health issues. He started to get obsessed with carrot juice. He started drinking it morning, noon, and night. This went on for months and months and months, months and months and months. His skin turned orange. The whites of his eyes actually turned orange. And eventually he died of the toxicity from too much vitamin A from and the keratin from the carrot juice. Now, I would say that's an adverse effect, you know, but um, it wasn't from a dietary supplement. It's just that he abused something natural to the point of. So I would think some of these adverse effects, which again here, no, there's no deaths with these, um, is just someone just not paying attention to what is the standard dose to take and just not paying attention as to what is already part of their body and, and getting proper testing to see what their levels are, to see if there is a deficiency in a certain, in a certain vitamin or mineral in their body um, before going whole hog and, and just taking a boatload of, of one supplement. So there, so to have, but have to have this many deaths from drug use and this many more adverse reactions to drugs and medications, that is more of a signal that something is obviously more dire and more harsh and, and more deadly with a man-made medication versus a vitamin supplement, right? So here we have in this, in this article link that we're gonna to provide to you, this also will, um, this will go to the White House, this will go to your senators, this will go to your representatives in Congress and you can also uh, feel free, I mean, uh, ANH has um, um, provided a, a letter form already written, but you can provide your own experience with, with vitamins and how, how they've affected your life. I've done the same for me. Um, it's been an amazing journey for me with uh, vitamins since I was... Um, 12 years old and learning about um, nutrition and supplementation and what it can do to to heal the body and keep the body healthy. So um, I don't know if there's anything more to say right now. I think that's it, but wanted to give you that information because this is not something that mainstream media um, is going to be talking about. I mean, there's there's so many other issues that they seem to want to harp on, and this is a very you know crucial time for us. Um, but not only here in the United States, but around the world, when it comes to self care and natural natural healing, natural immunity, um, and having supplements such as glutathione, vitamin D, and, and we're going to be talking about other, other supplements as well and the roles that they play um, in future episodes. But wanted to get this out to you because this is such a, so, so critical that these bills in the United States do not pass and you, we have control of 
you know, letting the supplement companies continue doing their job in giving us the different quantities and amounts of different supplements for all the different, uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, um, you know, different, you know, different situations that that people, some people have, and or many people have actually. So I thank you so much for uh, listening in, tuning in, and um, we will have um, more on the blog, more on the website, um, with all these links for for you to to um, to look at. And, uh, and to write in uh, your concerns for any of this, uh, any of these bills that are in Congress and in the Senate right now, and what you can do to make your voice heard. So thank you so much. God bless. And I'll see you in the next episode. Okay? Thanks. Are you looking for an internet talk radio station for your podcast? Look no further. At the helm of Passionate World Talk Radio are two women that want to provide a spot for you and your podcast to be heard. There are many other places for your podcast, but PWTR has the audience. You will not be disappointed. Our station has been on the Internet for the past 16 years. Call us for more information, 484 484- Three six four one zero three two. Our text Jeannie White, station manager at T H E C O N N E C T S H O W at gmail dot com for our podcast show details. Thank you for listening to Passionate World Talk Radio. You can listen to this program all over again by going over to https colon forward slash forward slash passionate world talk radio dot com. You can also hear it on Spotify, Spreaker, Amazon A L E X A, AMFM two four seven dot com every Tuesday evening between eight and nine PM. YouTube Facebook, Facebook Live, LinkedIn, and all the other podcast directories one can find on the Internet.